It's been a while since I last put myself on camera like this, but right now I'm sat in my recently refurbished office space, so I hope that it all looks more presentable. It's nice to have a, a more ideal space to work in, and hopefully having a better working environment will result in better videos, but we'll see. So it's 2021 now, you might have heard, a, a new year is upon us, and like at the start of every new year, you'll likely be hearing people talk about their new year resolutions, their goals and desires. Now, I'm not one for waiting for a new year to start doing something that I want to do, but I understand that a new year is often seen as a fresh start, and with that comes an opportunity to make some changes in your life. Now I think it's safe to assume that many of you watching this video are also into art, and so there's a chance that your goals this year are in relation to the art you produce. You likely want to develop your artistic skills, and as a result, improve your art. And I also have that same intention, except I would also like to improve as a video creator as well. And so I have created a list of a few things I would like to take the time to focus on this year and I will share them with you in this video. So prior to making my list here, I had taken some time to reflect on my performance as an artist and YouTuber throughout the previous year, realising that both of these pursuits have two simple outcomes. As an artist, I need to create art, and as a YouTuber, I need to create videos. Now in 2020, I created a lot of artwork, but most of this artwork was created for the purpose of a drawing tutorial, and in most cases, I wouldn't consider these drawings to be complete artworks, they are more so smaller example drawings. I personally make a distinction between the smaller drawings I make for videos and the larger full page drawings that I create, like the drawings I had created in my sketchbook this year, or the ones I had created for the realistic rendering tutorials on Patreon, and I will often post this artwork onto Instagram, whereas the smaller drawings that I make for the tutorials they don't make it onto there. That's an interesting side note actually, the fact that I have this notion that my Instagram page is this precious, almost hall of fame like display where only the best images should be seen and if I look at an image that doesn't meet these high standards that I have, it doesn't get to go on there. I think only around 20% of the art I create makes it onto there, and perhaps I shouldn't be as selective, considering that my role as a YouTuber, or content creator, that sounds more pretentious, is to create and publish content. I posted only 19 images to Instagram last year, which I don't think is enough when I consider the amount of potential images that I could have posted. I don't know how I feel about this, I think I need to continue to post the images I'd like to see on there, but I also need to show more of what I create. Like I have a lot of drawings that were done for the videos on YouTube that aren't seen on here, so I guess that's one new year's goal I've just added to the list. Post more of what I create onto Instagram, and be less particular when it comes to doing so. Anyways, the point I was trying to make before I went off on that tangent was the fact that most of the artwork I create is done so for the purpose of a tutorial, which is necessary, but at the same time, it means that I don't often get the opportunity to create artwork for the sake of creating a nice looking image. I miss sitting down at my desk with the intention of drawing something that looks cool, right? Because not everything I draw has to have a reason. I want to draw for the enjoyment of drawing. So when it comes down to it, I guess I could say one of my goals relating to art this year is to create more artwork. I like this idea of having a catalogue of presentable work, the type of work that someone would want to hang up on their wall because, after all, that's what artists do, right? We create our own pictures. Now I've discussed how much artwork I created last year as an artist, but what about the videos that I produced as a YouTuber? In 2020, I had uploaded 35 videos on this YouTube channel, 8 videos on my second channel, and 12 videos on Patreon, excluding the real-time drawing footage that I post on there as well. Now I aim to upload weekly onto this YouTube channel, and I haven't really done that this year. I don't want to make any excuses, but I'm going to make an excuse. You see, this year has been a little unpredictable, and sometimes life gets in the way. I do all of this myself, I plan, record and edit the videos, I make content here, and I also have a responsibility to create additional content for Patreon. There's a lot of work involved and sometimes I fall behind, unfortunately I'm limited as a human being, I need to make time to sleep, 
eat and go outside once in a while. Although I didn't upload on this channel as consistently as I'd have liked to, I did manage to produce 55 videos in total across all platforms and that's an amount I am happy with. I also want to give you all a general life update and I've discussed this already in videos on my second channel which tend to be more personal discussions on general topics by the way so if you are interested in that then I'll leave a link in the description but towards the end of last year I decided to get a day job. Many of you know I am a practicing architect and so following a year out I decided that I finally wanted to start working and involving myself within that industry. Now of course the dream is to do this full time and make a comfortable living from my art but until I get there I am working a day job which means I have to create content outside of that job and I often spend my mornings and evenings doing so. I love what I do which makes it also much easier but it's taken some time for me to develop an effective routine where I can keep ahead of the work. Now that I have somewhat adapted to this routine I hope to be more consistent with the videos that I create. I've also developed an effective approach now when it comes to making videos and in terms of the Patreon page, I know what I need to create and I also have a format for what I create now, like all of the study documents and process papers on there are presented nicely and the tutorials, whether they are the perspective drawing videos or realistic rendering videos, they all follow the same format which I think works well. Now I do want to point out that some videos I make this year will often require a little more time to produce. There's some projects that I have in mind that I want to bring to life this year and so there may be times when I spend more time working on them but the outcome should be worthwhile. So being more consistent is a goal of mine this year and the fact that I say this almost every year proves that this one might be harder for me but I'm confident that I will be. Currently, if you were to look at my YouTube channel, you'd see that a lot of my older videos are on the subject of realistic drawing, and many of the more recent videos are on the subject of perspective drawing. Now the reason for this is simply because my interests and intentions as an artist have changed over time. I still enjoy and will make videos on the subject of realistic drawing, but I also enjoy perspective drawing, and it's a, an area of drawing that I would like to specialise in. I have made a lot of videos on the subject in the more recent years and gradually I have grown an audience who also share an interest in the subject. I do have a lot more to learn and share on this channel and you know in the long term there'll probably be a point in time where I say okay I've got perspective drawing now what's next but until then I'm really enjoying making videos on this subject. Although I have realised that it seems to be more niche but they say that finding a niche and becoming the best at one thing is better than being average at many things. You all know what you are getting when you subscribe so another goal of mine is to continue learning and creating content on the subject of perspective drawing. So I want to make an effort this year to dial it back a little bit when it comes to my high standards for how I view my own work. Again, this one ties into what I was saying about Instagram, about how I am very selective in choosing what to post, which isn't necessarily a bad thing until you realise that it results in me posting less content. The same applies when it comes to making videos. I like everything to be right and if there is something that I'm not too sure about, maybe I'm not too happy with a drawing that I produce, then I become very critical of that and it gets to the point where I lose the desire to make the video as a whole because I don't like the drawing that I am including in it. And I mean if I show anyone else the drawing they'd say that it was fine. I could even come back a week later myself and look at it and think it's fine but it's just in the moment. If I don't like it then I think others might not like it and then you know what's the point the video doesn't get made or I spend too long working on it and as a result I produce less content. On a side note as well you've likely noticed my English accent and this has always been a burden for me. I get so many comments about it and they're all so random. Some people like it, some people dirt I've just come to accept it but I'm saying this because I'll often spend way too much time when recording the narration for my videos because I will often re-record sections and try and speak more clearly thinking that people won't understand me if I don't. 
I also think it can be seen by looking at my artwork that I am a perfectionist. I tend to rely a lot on the ruler when it comes to drawing my lines, which is acceptable, but I do realise that it can often result in the artwork looking more mechanical. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with using a ruler, especially when drawing in perspective, but I do think that drawing freehand is not only a good skill to develop in itself, but the artwork also appears to have a little more character. I've recently started to rely less on the ruler and draw freehand in some of the tutorials and so I want to continue doing that moving forward. Overall a goal of mine this year is to be less of a perfectionist in all areas of my life. So I've decided to include this one at the end here because it's not that relevant in terms of the work I produce as an artist or a YouTuber. It's more so to do with my life outside of work. I want to find the time to read more. And the reason for this is the fact that there's a lot of value to be found in books, both non-fiction and fiction. And although I tend to listen to many podcasts and audiobooks when I'm drawing, I find that if I'm going to read a non-fiction book with the intention to learn something, then I process the content and have a higher chance of remembering what I learn if I'm reading a physical book. So 30 minutes before bed is all I am trying to do, which shouldn't be too difficult. I think the only issue I'll have is the fact that I tell myself, oh, reading this book is good, but if I'm going to try and avoid procrastinating and playing video games to do this anyways, then I may as well do some actual work in that time. Like I should plan videos or something in that regard. But no, I'm going to start reading and each time I read a book, I'm going to make a video on the second channel talking about it. So you can all hold me to that. So I think that's it. Those are my goals for the new year. And I'm also interested in knowing what yours are, whether they are relative to your art or maybe you want to make some changes in your personal life. Whatever they are, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like. And if you want to keep up to date with the videos I release, then be sure to subscribe Subscribe. With that being said, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.